walk of the historical facts of the United States. And it's a North American publication. 'm wait a minute Ugh. all right so this is the prelude here right so the uniting of Asia starts with the breakup of Asia or better yet a breakup of the people that defined Asia put it on the map so to say the breakup of one of the greatest empires to date the world has known this monumental breakup also ends with the fall of those people into a deep amnesia for breaking the laws of the great God who gifted them with the unique abilities to bring peace to the world and build the greatest architecture the world has ever seen. So their name, history, culture, and complexion was stripped from the historical narrative of their great contributions to humanity. They were brought low, made the outcast, and named the beast of burden of society. Their name, nationality, their great work was whitewashed and dignity stripped away. Their heritage was taken by foreigners. Their lands, their estates were divided and inherited by offspring not of their blood. Even unto this very day, most are under deception of the great deceiver. Now at the end of time and living revelations will reveal their identity. Know yourself and your father, God, Allah, that you may learn to love instead of hate. Every man needs to worship under his own vine and fig tree, for this is the uniting of Asia. Islamism. Your first, so, your first uh, typo was a great, uh, in that first, in that first paragraph, you spell great wrong. You got great like in the great. Oh, okay. Over. I got Islam. you. Islam. Yeah. Islam. Please tell me those typos after. Mark them down for me. Praise Allah. And I will get to them. All right. So uh, we're going to start this narrative here with Revelations 2021, a little preview of Friday. Right. When we were talking um, more or less when the devil was. Uh, release right but to see that you got to know when he was captured and the prophet over July lets us know that too all right so in Quran question number eight uh, number 84 I believe 83 says, but anyway revelations 20 21 then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the abyss holding in his hand a great chain two he seized the dragon that ancient serpent who was the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. Now, who is this angel? Cron questionnaire. Cron questionnaires for more Americans, right? Number 40, we see something here. Number 40 says, what is our prophet to us? He is an angel of Allah who was sent to bring us the everlasting gospel of Allah. And just kind of keep that in mind as a reference. Now, number 84 gives us directly to whom revelations was speaking on right and number 84 well actually starts with number 83 or number 82 where it says uh was satan to be bound then satan was to be bound in part in part okay when was the head of satan taken off 1453 byzantine by whom by muhammad and as we know today muhammad the second okay so the prophet of Abu Ali also uh, tells, told us that, right? But also states, right, in the prophecies, the prophet said, I am a general as well as a prophet. I was Muhammad. Muhammad defeated the Roman Empire. 
when I conquered Rome, we went in with the sword. You could hear the sword swinging. I cut the head of Rome off and pulled down the flags, sent letters to other European governments and asked them, was I right? They said, yes, Mohammed, you are right. Just let us have a little place to live. This is when the head of the devil was taken off in 1453 and he was subjected to a thousand years of prison time. And in that, slavery was a part of it, him working, you know, that portion, that which, that's what it means to have your head taken off. Your governments become a protectate state. You got to pay the tribute to the overall Khanate or the Moroccan Empire, which was the Khanate, right? And um, all the way for a thousand years. So the picture you see down here to the left is near the ending of that thousand year period. The one you see to the right is the beginning. That's Mohammed with his carrying the green right flag of Islam, right? And along with that Moroccan flag, that all red flag in the background, right? And actually you can see the royal colors there, they're red and green. He's on the royal uh, steed, that Moorish horse, right? As you can see, doing the Moorish walk, right? The walk into victory. You know, Moors trained the horses to walk a certain way when they were coming into victory, right? Moorish horses were also trained to walk a certain way when the ruler or the high sultanate was on, the, uh, on that particular steed, right, in the lead. It walked a certain way with the high legs lifted up, almost like they were marching, okay? So anyway, this was the picture of Muhammad, or as they say, Muhammad, <laughs> but Muhammad, right, the second coming in to Constantinople after wiping them out. And as you can see, many Europeans slayed, you know, on the ground there. All right, next picture. All right. So 1453, Satan's head was cut off by Muhammad. And his 1,000 years in the Dark Ages began. All right. We pick up our story at the middle of the Christ Age when Satan's head was taken off. When was the head of Satan taken off? From a Moorish American historical narrative, Crown Questionnaire number 83 answers that 1453 Byzantine. Now, 1453 Byzantine is a very cryptic in its answer. As I discussed on Friday, we're doing a little um, prelude here, summary. So 1453 is a measurement of time by Byzantine, also referred to as Romans. How the Romans, or Rums, keep time of the years was in the year of our Lord Christ, Anno, which was represented by an I or a J. So it would be I, meaning in the year of our Lord, or Anno, 453 years after Christ passed. It's been, it was 450, 453 years when Christ had passed away. So 453 is the actual year, 453 years when Christ was there, right? The devil used the I or the J and changed it into a one, adding a thousand years to the calendar. Why? Because he was subjected for a thousand years, remember? And when his time was up, he had to make up his need to make up for his missing time in the historical narratives of the human family was on. So this is why he did that. And as you can see, the top picture representing one of the days under the royal empire of the Moroccan Tartarian, if you want to put uh, uh, Kane or Khalifa, meaning the same thing, Kane, Khalifa, being the same part, the Khalifa, right, which was the royal family or those royal Moors who had that direct bloodline to Allah, right, and this is how it was. There was the royal bloodline of the, of the East in the Holy Lands and the royal bloodline of the West. And there was a particular empire. Our empire stretched all the way from what is now known as China and Russia, all the way to the Americas by way of the Bering Straits of Annie, which would be the Pacific Ocean, or so that you can get a better understanding all the way in Russia to Alaska. From Russia to Alaska is only 30 miles. So this is the where we came in from Asia, known as also known as uh, east of Eden. When you're in Eden or Asia, east of that still 
which it, you'll end up in the Americas or Alaska. All right. East of Eden all goes back to where Cain or Khan, his real name was Khan. Cain and Abel, Abel and Khan. His name wasn't Cain, it was actually Khan. And Khan, after so called, so called killing Abel, which he knocked him out with a rock, right? And really, you know, put one on him. He was sent to East of Eden, which would be the Americas, where he ended up was in what is now known as South America. And thus you get the South American giants and all these particular things, all the way up into Queen Khalifa. But anyway, that's a different story for a different time. Meanwhile, Mohammed II and Ottoman of Tartaria, right, was uh, had conquered had conquered a Constantinople, right? The fall of Constantinople also, as the conquest of Constantinople, the taking the head of Satan moment of the Byzantine Empire by the Ottoman Empire by Mohammed II. The city was captured on the 29th of May, 1453, as a part of the cumulative accumulation of the 50, 53 day siege, which had begun on the 6th of April. The attacking Ottoman army or the Tartarian uh, uh, proxy army, <laughs> the Tartarians sent the Ottomans as a proxy to go attack Constantinople as a proxy uh, army, which significantly outnumbered Constantinople's defenders, was commanded by the 21 year old Sultan Mohammed, <laughs> they pronounce it, Muhammad II, later named the Conqueror. While the Byzantine army was led by the Emperor Constantine the Eleventh, Pagaculus or Pagaculus, after conquering the city, Muhammad made Constantinople the new Ottoman Tartarian capital, replacing Adrianople. Adrianople. The conquest of Constantinople and the fall of the Byzantine Empire marking the effective end of the last remnants of the Roman Empire, a state which began roughly 27 BC and had lasted near 1,500 years, right? Now, that seems like a long time, right, for Rome, I guess, but, you know, our empire lasted well, well, well. But anyway, uh, it was a pretty huge event to go take the head of the devil. Now you gotta remember at this particular time, you know, the devil, yeah, was, you know, some black people, black meaning pale, but it was also some, you know, those Asiatics as who were went into Asia, or Asia Minor, which is Europe. Remember, there were Muslims and Asiatics, right? So the Asiatics, some of the Asiatics went over there into Europe and became Europeans and began to go up the wrong way. Thus, starting what is now known as the, uh, or starting the Roman Empire, right? Or the European empires that they did not look at this time what they look like today because they're reset at now. So most of them had, you know, look like us or, you know, straight, a little bit more straighter hair, dark skinned individuals. And the slave was still at that time too, was the, um, was the Slav or what is known as a European. Okay. You guys still with me? Islam. 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 All right. So what we have, right, the hidden secret of the Tartarians is that they are Muslims. You know, this is the part that they don't want to put out there. All right. And the reason I know this is because of Genghis Khan, right, and Tamerlane or Timur, or Genghis Khan meaning Timur with the T-I, but other T more with the T E, right? Names bespeak that they were Moors. And also the Prophet Noble Jew Ali tells us in our Quran questionnaire, where did they go when they left, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when they left the Garden of Eden, you know, number 57, who were Adam and Eve? They are descendants of the fathers, fathers meaning plural, of the human families, mothers meaning plural, and fathers meaning more than one, right? A gang of people. Asiatics and Muslims, where did they go? They went into Asia. Well, that's Asia Minor. Asia Minor is Europe. Number 2058 in your Quran questionnaire asks, where did they go? They went to Asia. Asia Minor, though, right? Which is Europe, right? 
What is the modern name given to their children? Asiatics. Another term is Romans that the prophet Nobi Dwali used for them. All right, so they went up in there and became Romans, right? Now, you see that the other Muslims from the Holy Land of Asia, as you can see, the great Tartarian Empire covers the entire Asian continent. Today would be known as Russia in the majority of China. So when you're looking at Russians, right, you're really looking at Moscow, uh, the Muskegon Tartarians, all right, or which would be known way before Russia came along, the, great, the greater Tartarian. Now, the Tartarian like empire, it's like I'm telling you, started along with the Genghis Khan, the brother that you see right there. All right. Got another picture of him. I'll show you a little later. Him on a donkey wearing the royal colors. All right. And straight up brother. And his name is Timur. Genghis Khan is a title. It's a Khanate. This is where they get the title, the great ruler or the great ruler of the empire. Genghis Khan, right? But his name is Timur. All right. You guys follow me? Islam. 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 Okay, let's move to the next one here. So what we see here up to the left, right, I mean to the left, right picture is Genghis Khan in his in his turban and you can see the braids you can see his braids right and that's a brother with the wide nostrils and everything and I'll show you a picture later on actually you can go see it on one of my videos of what the Chinese looked like back in the day they were brothers they looked just like me and you and this is prior to the reset or the gay Khan grafting what is now known as your modern Chinese. All of the modern Chinese can, taste, can trace their phenotype back to the great Khan or Timur, who actually helped genetically produce what is now known as the Chinese of today. And back in the day, the Chinese, as you see of the day, were around, but they were slaves called the natives. Native is another word for slave. Okay, so here, right, if I can just kind of move this thing out of the way, there we go. All right, so over here to the left is Genghis Khan or Timur, right? So it says Prince Michael of Russia. Now, Russia was a protectate or a state of the great Tartarian Empire. Now, this prince there was uh, passed between fires in accordance with the ancient Tauric Mongol tradition. Batu Khan, which Genghis Khan, stabbed him to death for his refusal to do obedience to Genghis Khan's shrine in the Pagan ritual. Note that Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man, excuse me, as an Asiatic or as a Moor, okay? Because his name is Timor, okay? <laughs> Which is the family name, bruh? Which means the Moor, T-R-T-I-R-T-E, -T -E, meaning the, right? So painting by a Russian painter, Vladimir something, Smirvinov in 18, 1883. So what you're seeing here is you got the Asian, you got the one who looks today with the whole little Asian garb on it. Everybody believes, you know, Chinese. You got the Russian with the little Gandalf little kind of hat. These are what is known as those priests today, the Russian, um, I forget what they call them. How did this What is those Russian priests called? Oh, the guards. Yeah, those are okay. them. And then you have the other part of the Asian here with the blue cap on right, in the Asiatic garb, and, you know, a few more Asiatics, right? But you can see that the brother here, Khan, the Khan, Genghis Khan himself, Timur, all right, is on the high throne. And they're all scared to death because bruh won't do the ritual. What end up happening, he end up getting stabbed to death. He end up getting his throat cut because he didn't want to go and do the ritual. Now, Right. There was two parts to Genghis Khan. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, he was a Muslim, but he also sometimes believed in deist, deity, deistism. 
you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. paying homage to the other gods and things like that. But then he totally went with Islam, you know what I'm saying, after everything else, right? So what you're seeing here, if you really know what pictures can speak, you have what is known as the Russians. Now, Russians have a lot of the Tartarian or Moroccan bloodline, you know. That's why their hair is so dark and the uh, and all that. They still have that, right? But they're still a part, you know, of the uh, overall um, Asiatic or Tartarian-ish empire, okay? So over here to the right, we see in a graph, the official history is hiding a major world power, which exists as late as the 19th century. Tartary, or Tartar, was a country within its own flag, within its own flag, excuse me, Tartar was a country with its own flags, its own government, and its own place on the map. Its territory was huge, but somehow quietly incorporated into Russia and some other countries. This country you can find on the maps predating the second half of the 19th century. In other words, previous to the reset, to the global reset because of climate change, which you're gonna get into and everything else, right? Uh, Yet some of its 18th century Tartar Muscovites, like the the Muskie tribe or the Muskies, right? That means Moscow. The musky tribes of America, Seminoles, mean Moscow. Why? Because the Tartarian Empire went from all the way to Asia, like I was telling you, down through Alaska, all the way down from Washington to Oregon, well, today and now in California, all of California, all the way to Florida. Thus, 3 million 50,000 square miles. That's huge, bro. That's like more than one continent. You understand? Huge. So previous to the 1900s, like say here in 1550, Tartar was on top, like the world power. And as it gradually began to fall, you know what I'm saying? And the fall happened really, right? around the 1800s here, as you can see, it totally declined until now where you barely know your history, your architect, your anything. And this is what this graph is showing, how once we were the world power and we diminished little uptakes here and there where we took power back in the 1700s from the devil, right? But by, by the time, as you can see this big dip here in the 1700s, about 1779, the more was put into slavery. 1774, his name was White off official records. Thus they began, why? Because here comes the, because the devil was coming in for the second half of his return. Let's go, let's go, let's go a little further. All right, so Genghis Khan is more well known as Timur, or T, T, E, or I equals the more, or more, mer, and the mer means more, because he created You know, Genghis Khan is well known to, right, because he created the largest land empire in history, because we covered everything in history. And while it fragmented its four successor state rulers, most of them known world, uh, of the known world for the next hundred years, one of those, a few of those particular rulers is like Timur, Timur or uh, Tamerlane, right, and Muhammad II, all right? Now, below here is the Sultan Palace of 1851. Notice the architecture, because this architecture is extremely important. If it was in color, you would see those stripes in gold and um, red, or gold and white, right? Or gold and uh, some type of maroon, something to that effect, right? But this architecture is very important in its style and its constructions, because it's been around for hundreds of uh, thousands of years. Let's put it that way. This is what, when um, so-called Columbus discovered America, when he was running up one of those uh, rivers or things looking, he said, when he first got to the Americas, he saw minarets. This is what this is, you guys. These are minarets and temples and mosques. That's what this is. So when Columbus got here, this architecture was here. All right. So the picture to the right is you see a sultan 
right, of the, of the caliphate or khanate, right, being the same thing, right, this is when he, this is when we were running um, more Spain and also near the end when we started new Andalusia and new um, Spain in the Americas after we came back home from 1711 going up in, you know, when we went in and did our things in the 600, right, with uh, Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli. And then in 711, we ran all the way up in places. Remember, Muhammad didn't come about until the 600, right? And Islam are that particular, the prophet Muhammad. So anyway, the Moors, right, being directly in bloodline with the Mohammedans, you know what I'm saying? All of these things, right? You gotta kind of look at all of that. All right. So in other words, you know, we were ruling, you know, um, from 1453, we were ruling way before 1453, let's just say 711 AD, all the way until uh, 1492, really until 1610, all right? And these palaces over to the lower left were everywhere around the world, especially here in the Americas, I'm gonna prove that. All right, so this brother here is the uh, Timur, or Timur, right, named after, you know, Genghis Khan too, right, and in that, in that particular bloodline. So Timur, or Timur, uh, the iron, uh, was born, I believe, uh, it says 1336, right, to 1405. Later Timur, right, was a Tur uh, Turco-Mongo conqueror who founded the Timurid Empire or the Moorish Empire, let's put it like that, part of the Moorish Empire in and around modern day Afghanistan, Iran, and Central Asia. Becoming the first ruler of the Turmur dynasty and undefeated commander, he was widely regarded as one of the greatest Khans Ooh, of all I time. I've so much to work to do. All right, so please put your mic on mute. Right, so he was one of the greatest Khans of all time. Tamerlane is a mixture of his name from the French. Uh, T. Murr, the lame, is actually his name because at 21, he was uh, in, a, in an accident. Did not stop him from conquering all of the known world, though. T. Moore pretty much conquered the known world. And as you can see over here, Tamerlane is a brother with the ball fez on. Okay, that's a fez. It's called the bile fez. It's how deep and far the stuff goes back. And he looked like that, like that guy. I mean, he looked like an Asiatic, like a Moor, right? I mean, because he was, all right? So Tamerlane was not the conqueror's actual name, though more properly, he is known as Timur or Tamerlane. So Tamerlane down here, let me give you a little history. Tamerlane is the emperor of Tartaria. Do you guys see that part? To the lower left, right? So it says Tamerlane, emperor of Tartaria, called the wrath of God and the terror of the Lord. He overthrew and took prisoner. Back in the day, Fs were pronounced like Ss. So if you guys did not know that, when you hear elf, and it's E-L-F, it's actually Ls. That's the real term because Fs were pronounced as Ss. So anyway, so he, uh, he took prisoner Balazat, great emperor of the Turks, hunting him in an ivory, oh, putting him in an ivory cage. Look at that. So Tamerlane took Balazat, the great emperor of the Turks, which is the Ottomans, thus letting you understand that the Tartarian Empire ruled over the great Ottoman Empire. Hunting him and putting him in the ivory cage, his army consisted of a million men. He also conquered Mesopotamia, Babylon, with the kingdom of Persia. He died in 1402. So he was right before Muhammad II. And he was the one to push everything up in there, giving room for Muhammad II to finalize and do his job, which is take the head of the devil. 
This is one of your great ancestors right here. And as you can see in another video I'll do, but you can see at the top here, Timur's bust, he's wearing one of the great, we'll just call it a headdress, but actually it's a, it's a form of a, um, a warrior's, uh, I forget what they call them, the, the style, but that's technology you see. And if you notice, it's the shape of an onion dome, as you see the onion domes on all of our tech, on all of our tech with the antennae on it. The, the top piece is the actual antenna. And these particular, I know it's probably hard for everyone to believe, but these particular um, headgear or helmets were worn by the majority of the Ottoman Empire all the way up in the Moorish Empire around the world. And they were actually able to communicate with one another because it was Wi-Fi. All right, I'm gonna show you the tech in a minute. But and he has a similar waset as the ancient Egyptians used to put on their crown. Okay, so I know it sounds crazy, but bruh, we were in, so half the armies had these helmets that they were able to utilize as Wi-Fi. Why? Because your head is a harmonic resonator. So all you have to do is be able to hit the right frequencies and stuff, right, and get that and send it, and your head and your skull alone acts as the receiver and as the uh, speaker. And you can hear it in your head. It's called low frequency um, 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 pulse. And that stuff was around for thousands of years. I know it's hard to believe, but it's real. No. All right. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. Any questions on your brother Tamerlane or T. Moore, the lane? Islam, that technology Islam. sound amazing. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, we're gonna, that's going to be my next Islam. video. Isn't? is to show and prove you guys the high tech of Atlantinian technology that was still being used by the ancient Moors of ancient Asia and of the West because we were the royal family. We have all the tech. Islam. Islam, and do you have is anything? that where they get Timberlands from? Tim Timberlands? Timberlands? Probably. Probably. Okay. Do you have you anything say, on the dynasties? Yeah, so uh, Tamerlane's the had a dynasty. You can go look. Okay. You can go look this stuff up. Uh, T. Murr had a dynasty. In other words, you know what I'm saying. So did uh, well. You know the Genghis Khan dynasty was with uh, a gang of people come through the Hun, the terrible, the Huns, where all those people were really one. Okay, they want to break it up, but it was a constant wave of putting a foot on the devil's neck because he was going around destroying stuff. And at that time, a lot of the devils looked like us. Smooth boy. It's Islam, Grand Governor. Just as you just noted, uh, you know, the technology that we had back then was so advanced. That just shows you our connection to Allah. Because, again, as above, so below. That's so right. That, it, you know, it just gave us, it gave us that much more understanding of who we are before we caught that amnesiatic uh, hit. With that, I like to say peace. Islam. Islam is that's correct, boy. So everybody can, you know, communicate too, but you're kind of sincere right on that. So the Tartar are barbar Muslims of the East and West, or the Morak Khan Empire. Mo coming from the ancient Mo Khan Khan, Ra coming, or Ta coming from our ancient father out of Egypt, because we have a connection, like I told you guys in the last video of him, and the Khan, the Khanate. Therefore, we're Morak Khans. And that's where that word comes from, Moroccan. All right, so the West or the Moroccan or Moroccan empire of the world only repurpose subtle uniformity of their architecture bespeaks of their world empire. All right, so a, little, a, a few other things, but the architecture today bespeaks a lot. So this right here to give you a better understanding that the Tartarians are the, were all Muslims, we have an account coming from the CIA, right, nat national website, which you can go directly to and download this. It has now been declassified. And it says, or let us take the matter of history. But first it says, add to some credibility. Below you can find an excerpt from the CIA document classified in 1998 and created in 1957. Or let us take the matter of history, which along with religion, language, and literature consists of the core of a people's culture and heritage. And I would add architecture. Here again, the communists have interfered in a shameless manner. For example, on the 9th of August, 1944, the Central Committee of the Communist Party 
uh, sitting in Moscow issued a directive ordering the party's Tartar Tartar Providence Committee to proceed to a scientific revision of the history of Tartary to liquidate serious shortcomings and, and mistakes of the Nationalistic Character Committee by individual writers and historians in dealing with the Tartar's history. In other words, Tartar history was to be rewritten, let us be frank, was to be falsified in order to eliminate references to Great Russia's aggression and to hide the fact of the real course of Tartarian Russia's relation. And this was no isolated case. In every Muslim area within the Russia, historians on the order of the Communist Party have rewritten history to distort the facts so that the Russian appear always in good light. Needless to say, histories which present the facts truthfully have been withdrawn and destroyed so that the present and future generations of Muslims are forever denied the chance to learning the true facts of their nation's past. Hmm. CIA, CIA have documents on your historical understanding where you it's fell from. Wrong. See, we're it's looking wrong. at where we fell from it's so that we can understand what we had. So we understand the glorious state in which we lived under our binding fig tree, worshiping the great God Allah and doing what we're supposed to do before we start chasing after the gods of Europe because they look similar to us, to our European Asiatics who came Europeanized and became Roman look like us. So, you know, sometimes we look like, you know, we look fly. And sometimes we want to start wearing a garb, you know, later on, you know, nearing the times of the devil's release, you feel me? and uh, taking on their particular way, and we fail. But let's move on. So the Tartarian or Moroccan empire stretched to the Americas from Asia to Alaska, down to California to Florida, the Pacific Ocean route. And in there, right, you could see over here to the uh, left upper hand corner, the Tartarian Empire in the red here ish, right, stretching all the way over into the Americas, down into South America, and the parts of uh, Florida that they don't kind of show here, right? But anyway, this Tartarian map does show them, you know, all the way here in the Americas. And this picture down to the left of the right, right, uh, I mean, excuse me, left below is in Russia, okay, around 1860. And as you can see, the, the architecture. Right now, we're going to start looking at the architecture designs and start architecture of our people, you know what I'm saying, that we can better understand what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So you can see your history. Over to the right is in Chicago. This is what Chicago used to look like in the 1800s, previous to them coming in and saying, oh, they created some world affair and then burned it all down. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you you took, you took say you took two years to create all of this, these pyramids, these great Romanistic columns and everything else, and then you then burn it down everywhere around the world within, what, a matter of each other in four or five years of each other? Around the whole world. They had these 10-mile square radius that looked like this in, in Ohio, okay, in Chicago, in California in San Diego, in, in major places where our empire was, all right? This over here to the left, like I say, this is in Russia, our Siberia. All right. This right here is uh, Tartarian now, Russia, 1857, 1860. Notice the architectural design. The same thing with the Kremlin. It has the exact same design. Well, these are Moorish designs because of the technology we have in the onion domes. If you can see, this one's hard to see, but they got antennae called aerials on all of them, gathering the ether tech in the air. And then there's batteries in this onion dome part, right? And it goes on down and then it lights up this entire spot. More Tartarian architecture in the Americas and Russia. All right, so here we have Russia in 1860 with the exact same area. This is the St. Petersburg. This is Siberia, Russia, coming more towards the Americas through Alaska area, right? Got the exact same 
aerials on top of the buildings, the same architectural design, the same spires as you would find in um, Mecca today. You know what I'm saying? Those, those type of spires and stuff, right? Here, this is a picture of Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, Utah in 1893 with the exact same Moroccan Tartarian design, all stretching all the way to Asia or Tartarian Asia, right? All the way to the Americas. Here we have to the left, Barbarian Wars of 1812, right? Where this is in the Americas though. And as you can see, the European slave in between him, along with another brother slave, who were heading to the plantations of America under the control of what is what was known as the, um, the 16 tribal tribes of America, the Cherokee, the Iroquois, the Muskegee, known as the Muskegee meaning Moscow, Muskai or Moscow, okay? And uh, uh, that were running all that. Then you had the Barbary Wars and all that around 1812, right? And you had people like um, the Bay of Tripoli, you know what I'm saying, the Bay of San Diego at this time, the Bay of Monterey, B-E-Y. I should have put the little map picture in here where it spelled it B-E-Y for you. But all that was going down, right? And all this architecture is the same, built by these people over here to the left, all right? So the one in chains here, these slaves, and yet there were some brothers who, went against whatever and rolled with somebody else, I guess. You know what I'm saying? And they were put into a form of ch uh, chattel slavery, you know, that was been going on since 1453, keeping it 100. Right. And you see the similarity of architecture here in Russia, all the way to Salt Lake City and in Siberia. Can you guys see that? Islam. Islam, that means that they all had the same blueprint and they all would work from the same uh, model. Islamism. Islamism. Right. So here we have architect, Moorish architecture in Florida. This is an old Moorish building that they restyled in Florida, still there today, built when you built it. To the right, is a picture of Chicago in 1893. Don't look like that today, but it sure looked like that back then. And it was called Shalaga or Chi, because that's the way you spell Chi, the Chi energy, C-H-I, Chi Aga. It was beautiful. Okay, Chi is a, what is known as a Tartarian or Asiatic, because we're from Asia, Asiatic term. All right, and hat over here to the left is what is known as the Louisiana Exposition of 1904. And then the, and, but look at the same architecture design. This is what Louisiana looked like before when you were still enslaved, slavery. In, wrong, say, right you were out of slavery, but this picture was taken in 1904, but that picture and that architecture goes back hundreds of years when we were here when we were ruling everything here in the America. This is what, how we live. This was why they called it Atlantis. The, as you can see, the aerials over here coming off the buildings, this is catching the ether tech, right? And as you can see, we had waterways because we had, were water, where we were water people. We were the sea people. We were the Phoenicians, right? The ones who sailed the entire world. And our streets and our highways was waterways, all right? But look at this Moorish architecture in Florida, right? And look what it looked like in Chicago and in Louisiana prior to them dismantling things. Why? Because of the Great Deception. All the same builders, same style architecture across the empire or world. Here you have another picture in Russia in 1860, the Salt Lake. This is the same um, picture right here in the middle of the Great Salt Lake of Utah, that great bath pavilion that was built, right? It was a great bath to clean people up. I wonder who they were cleaning up. An American City Hall in 1871 in the lower uh, left. And if you can notice, you see the technology, right? So to, it, the one to the right, I'm over to the lower left picture, the American City Hall, but there's two pictures here. Now the one to the right 
you can see the, the technology here. All right, let me kind of give you a little drawing of it, a little thing of it really quick. Uh, where's my, here it is. So right here, this right here. Today, you call those telephone poles. Prior, there were no wires. This is gathering and it's receiving and um, 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 putting out, what is that? Receiving and um, transmitting. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Transmitting, right? The ether tech so that the surrounding cities can gather the electricity or whatever and turn their lights on. And as you can see, all the aerial antennas on the buildings. And these were throughout the cities getting closer and closer to the 1900s. And I can show you pictures in the early 1900s where these were everywhere in the Americas, but there were no wires attached to them. Then a few years later, they began to attach the wires to these so they can charge you for the energy. And that's when JP Morgan and Tesla came out with AC and DC current. Yeah, uh, in these particular ones where they got into your old buildings while you were still enslaved and learned your technology and then came out and said, oh, we invented this, he invented that, this guy invented this, this guy invented that. That's the great deception, the great lie, okay? This is where we talk about mental slavery, the great deception, the great deceiver being let out. You know what I mean? Islamism. All right, let me erase this really quick. San Francisco, 1870, prior to them burning all this down, claiming they built this in a year and as some type of exhibit and then burned it to the ground, right? Within a few, I man, I got pictures of this area. These columns are stone, homie. I got pictures because they still left pieces in Frisco of this before they burned it. And going up on it, all of it's stone, unbelievable mortar and all that. And this is what it looked like prior when they came in and was released, okay, out of being slaves. And they came in in the early 1800s, 1850, 1860. This is what they walked into in the Americas, what you left behind. Look how beautiful it is. Looks like something not only out of some ancient uh, Atlantinian, but Roman, but everything, Moroccan with the great arches and the spires and the domes and the onion domes and the aerials on top of it and all of these things right here. But what don't you see? What don't you see in this picture? Wires. 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 There you go. There you go. And you believe for one moment that these people were heating all of this up with fireplaces? Really? Uh, no, these people got us believing that these people he no. this in the 18th century fireplace, man. Okay, it's impossible That's because not crazy. That's and you not don't see any chimneys. There you exactly. go, and you don't see no smoke coming from no chimney. So how in the world did these people keep their spots warm? Tech. Wow. I showed you guys that in a previous video. Well, it was called um, the rayon or the radion um, devices, thus they get radiation today from it and talk about its nuclear energy when it's not. It's a radion that's safe and you can utilize it. And the towers up here actually have radion uh, devices in them, all right? So these particular towers, you see here, this one, oh, let me move this thing, this one right here, Right, they have these gradients in there, and that allows them to capture the energy and all that and store it. All right, I got this picture from John Levi. That's his symbol over there. Good guy. If you ever have a chance, please go watch his videos. He came out, only European I ever saw it, came out and said, All this architecture and all this technology and stuff is Moorish and people are hiding it. And if I gotta be the first to say it or say it, I'm gonna say it. I said, oh, go on in European. 
All right, so the other part of Frisco here, San Francisco, 1861, notice there are no electrical wires or people. Notice the onion dome Tartarian Moors technology on all the architecture. This is San Francisco, right after the great uh, cosmic event or the solar storm known as the first reset of the time. And if you notice, that caused the great fires to come down and burn up everything. And then if you notice, right, at this time, the picture over here to the right with the great onion domes that they've turned into a church. They want you to believe that was a church. At this time, it wasn't a church. This was not a Presbyterian church. It had great dynamo engines in here catching the ether tech on these onion domes. And there were huge engines in here known as dynamo engines sending out uh, other uh, uh, electromagnetic energy to the other homes around here. And another thing you don't see, right, is electricity. But look, look.